So if you're just starting off in computer science, whether you're a freshman or you just transferred into the major, you might be eyeing your first software engineering internship. And if you want to start applying, you're going to need a resume. In today's video, whether you have any relevant experience or not, I'm going to show you how to build your first software engineering internship resume step by step and what about the resume might change with time as you grow as a student and software engineer. But first, I'm going to show you an example of what maybe the third evolution of a resume might look like so you know what we're working towards. This is the resume that I used to get my internship offers at Amazon and Google, and it's, it served me well. At the top, we can see the education. It's pretty light. I don't have any relevant coursework. I just have my GPA and instantly move into the experience because that's ultimately the goal if you have a software engineering internship is to highlight it. At the time, I only had one. I had uh, a little bit of experience making these YouTube videos, which is, is definitely relevant if you do any type of blogging or tutoring or really anything that's kind of STEM adjacent and has to do with you teaching or or learning for that matter. And then Entra, the data science internship, you know, that's, that's data science. It was really more of a marketing internship that I'm kind of packaging as a data science internship because I wanted it to seem as close to software engineering as possible. As for the independent projects, this top project here was from a graduate level computer science class that I took and then the following three were projects that I built on my own time in a semester that I took off and you can actually see at the bottom with my extracurriculars the only line of anything from high school or just non software engineering or computer science related at all is the restaurant manager line at the very bottom there this Crimson College Academy is from high school but it, it's a dual program with college and then I, I did start a club and and get involved a little bit at Seton Hall which was the university that I started at before transfer transferring to Rutgers. In between get this resume and the resume that we're going to be building today, you might have something like this, your name, your phone number, all the basic information at the top, a little bit more information about your university education with relevant coursework. I don't really like relevant coursework as a section because like everyone's taking data structures. Most people are going to take an algorithms course. I don't really know how much information it provides the recruiter, but if you need to fill the white space, it's definitely better than nothing. In your experience, once you have a teacher assistant position, a tutoring position, anything to do with uh, research. If you are doing research, writing Python scripts for one of your professors or a software engineering internship, a business analyst internship, anything in corporate America is also good because it shows not only that you know how to learn, but also that you know how to behave in a corporate environment, even if it doesn't show that you know how to code. So all of that's relevant experience. And after your first internship or your first couple semesters, you might start to build some experience. And in independent projects, Generally, you're gonna want more than two, something akin to three or four substantial projects, each of which take up two to four lines in your independent project section. And most of these are gonna wind up coming from your classes. Although there are a couple of projects that I do really recommend you spend at least a weekend working on. And then you can also see that you have extracurriculars and skills, again, with the skills section, kind of the same problem that I have with listing relevant coursework is if your languages are Python, C Sharp, Ruby, Java, then you should probably have projects or work experience in those languages that substantiates your claims just listing them at the bottom there doesn't actually tell the recruiter anything but it is useful for the application tracking system and the application tracking system is the thing that recruiters use to sort and read your resume before they actually get their hands on it there's a reason I'm just showing you simple black and white one column resumes and that's because they're the most friendly with application tracking systems you don't want to have some fancy two column resume with a bunch of colors and a bunch of weird format Adding because it might not mesh well with those systems and eventually it's going to get your resume just thrown in the trash before it even had the opportunity to see the light of day. So keep it simple. The, re the resume is not the place to get fancy. That's the role of the cover letter, which I don't even recommend a cover letter, but if you really want to, you can, or your first call with a recruiter, your emails, your communications, you know, that's, that's where you should get fancy and show your personality. Your resume should be cold, black, and white. Uh, but back, back to the resumes, what we're starting with today is actually this and and as you can see we have relevant coursework we have your GPA on a, a whole separate line we have your high school with any relevant ex distinctions like National Honor Society different awards clubs that you might have been a part in when when you're just starting out as a freshman in computer
computer science, it's okay to kind of fill this blank space, but do understand that eventually you wanna move in the direction of everything being related to software engineering. Leadership and work experience, they might have to get meshed into one category because you, you want it to look substantial. You don't wanna have 15 different categories. So if you have to group your leadership and work experience, that's okay. Go join a club, run for treasurer or secretary, something like that. You don't need to found a club. You don't need to be the president of a club, but going to those clubs, getting involved, yes, it's gonna go on your resume as leadership experience, but also in the process of going to those meetings, meeting people, getting to know alumni of the club, you're gonna learn a lot. So when you're building up your resume, it's just as much about what you, the words that get put on your resume in the end, as it is about the things you're learning in the process of putting those words on your resume. Back here, we can, we see projects. You know, you might not have that many projects. If you're going to like Carnegie Mellon or Stanford or MIT, then yeah, your intro to computer science class is probably on crack. Uh, like like this kid here who from Carnegie Mellon, oh, not this video, this video. It's a Connect Four game with a machine learning model trained to beat you. And it's got uh, hundreds of lines of Python code across multiple files. Like this is a crazy project, but in reality, most people's intro to computer science class is gonna look a little bit more like this, where you start off with some pseudocode, go into hello world, and you're just really covering like the basics of Java. That's okay, it happens. And while some of these projects in most state schools, like the one that I went to, Rutgers University, might not be substantial enough to really justify multiple lines on your resume, something you can do is over the course of a couple of days over the weekend add a front end to the project add a, connect it to the internet just do a couple of these little things if you don't know how to do it in the language that you're working with that's okay google it just google how to build a front end in java there's tons of tutorials online it's, and after you get over that kind of like first hurdle of learning how to google software engineering concepts and learning how to code with your intro to computer science class you should be able to figure out the rest from there and googling way as you do a project is ultimately what most of us do on the job anyway so it's a useful skill to develop so step one is download this resume template and fill it out step two you're going to want to make a github that you upload all of your computer science coursework to sometimes you can get in trouble with your university if you're posting the solutions to your github but that's okay you can just make the repo private and uh, still link to it anyways or you can make it public and just make sure no one knows as you're filling out this resume do keep in mind that you know if you're tutoring a kid once a week that's kind of enough to go on your resume you really you got to learn how to get fancy with your words uh, it's important if there's any numbers that you can get out of your project say you did something x percent faster than the base implementation in java or something along those lines to back up the code that you wrote with actual results that's great but that's also going to be hard to do for a lot of beginner projects so it's okay if ultimately the words on your resume ha really just describe the technologies you used and how you plugged them together. It's important to know that a lot of stuff, like say you used Django, the Python backend framework, then it's very possible that you implemented a REST API. If you implemented a REST API, you might have implemented an HTTP protocol. And you don't have to know what those things mean, but do understand that when you're using any library related to a programming, language or you're building out really anything at all there's going to be the software engineering technology that you use to build that thing and there's also going to be the computer science principles and theories that were used to either build the tool or describe mathematically what's going on so something that might be useful is using both terms from computer science and software engineering that they might be describing the same thing or even different terms within software engineering itself might be describing the same thing but they will paint a much more robust picture of your project it's a little bit of word vomit sometimes but it gets a lot of keywords on your resume and it's a lot better than nothing like ultimately your first resume a lot of the things you do it's more because it's better than nothing and not because it's, it's good on its own in a vacuum sometimes you're gonna wind up with assignments that really spin up a story around whatever whatever code you're writing it, even if ultimately you're just implementing a couple of basic data structures this data structures project from Rutgers which is a second semester computer science course it's this whole classroom simulating story it's okay to add that story to your resume makes it a little fun but again don't 
forget that ultimately recruiters are looking for your software engineering skills. So while it might add a line or two and look decent on your resume to go with the story of some of these assignments, definitely stick to the computer science and software engineering principles for the most part. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make a GitHub. So it's, it's easy enough to make a GitHub and GitHub in general is useful uh, it just to have, like look at this GitHub right here. Someone made a repo with a bunch of software engineering internships that you could apply to. My GitHub personally has all of my projects on it, a bunch of repositories. And honestly, I still have some stuff that I gotta upload here from some of my more recent classes, but making a GitHub is easy. Throw your profile picture and a short description up there and it's ultimately just a place to put your code so that when recruiters are reading your resume, they can do a little sanity check and say, okay, this person has actually written code before it's on his github who knows if he just got it from a tutorial or whatever but it's here another thing that's useful to make is a linkedin so linkedin quite it's it's quite the platform there's there's a lot to it but when you're just starting out you're just going to want to link to your link to your github link to your resume and any blog or youtube like if you have something like that then please feel free to add it but ultimately the same words that are going on your resume related to your college or high school experience should also be reflected in your linkedin a linkedin page isn't much more than just a, a glorified interactive resume yes you can post to it yes you can do all that stuff but to just get started fill out create a linkedin and fill it out the same way as your resume recruiters love linkedin they're all over linkedin so this is a way for you to speak their language so once you've filled out your resume with the basic kind of like high school experience or clubs different things you get involved with you've tried to create something out of nothing in the sense that maybe you're a tutor or maybe you became the the secretary of a club and after you've had your github where you uploaded your first couple intro to computer science projects potentially spent a few hours making those intro to computer science projects a little bit more robust by giving them a front end or plugging them into the internet. The the one thing that I think you can really do to boost up your resume is building a personal project. What personal project? What are personal projects? I have a ton of videos about that, but I've said it before and I'll say it again. Just build out a REST API. If you don't know what that is, Google each individual term. Google what is a REST API when it tells you what the acronym stands for. Google each individual word in the acronym for what it means. Do Run a depth first search on the definitions of all of these words. And if you need a stack of technologies that you can use to do this, I would recommend a Pern stack, Postgres, Express, React, and Node. So, so please, please just trust me, if you follow this tutorial, if you figure out what everything that they're saying means in this tutorial, you're not going to understand everything. It's going to take you a lot more than an hour and 20 minutes to understand everything there is to do about REST APIs and HTTP and, and databases and all of that. But just to get the ball rolling, just to show recruiters that you're not only a computer scientist, but you're also a software engineer, PernStack is the way to go. So hopefully I, I kind of gave you some ideas to get the ball rolling. Like I said, you can make something out of nothing. You can use this resume format I, or this resume template I will have in the description down below and any just throw everything on here so that's that's gonna be it for this video a little little quick one just to give you some ideas for how to use your intro to computer science projects and kind of what your resume might want to look like when you're just barely starting out I have other resume content other project content on my channel that goes into further details for that second or third evolution of your resume so that's gonna be it for this one peace